next story we're bringing out in the open tonight combines sex, marketing, and religion, not three things you usually think of together. But when we heard about how one church in Florida is trying to attract more followers, we had to know more. Send Ted Rollins to Fort Myers to find out about the preacher who's using sex to sell the church. Sex gets people's attention. MyCrappySexLife.com Which this billboard in Florida certainly did. We were going for a shock and awe factor, uh, and we certainly got that. The shock was that the billboard, which some people thought was vulgar, came from a church. Part three of this series we're calling My Great Sex Life. Part of a marketing campaign promoting a series of sermons on sex. I created sex, that God is for sex. 31-year-old pastor Matt Keller runs the non-denominational Next Level Church in Fort Myers. Before this service, a warning to parents was posted that the material may not be suitable for children. So the question is not, am I going to have sexual desire in my life? The question is, what am I going to do about it? So in week Keller's message, while delivered with a hip, conversational, passionate style, is pretty much by the book. He preaches that sex is for single people to avoid and married men and women to enjoy. His wife Sarah was at his side for this service about sex in marriage. And I think that culture wants us to buy into that lie that sex is a duty, especially once you get into marriage. It's just kind of like, I guess he needs it, so here I am. God created sex. Why not at least tell people what he has to say about it? Keller says since starting the sex series, church membership has grown about 30 percent, and it's a growing trend, especially among evangelicals. Kurt Fredrickson is the director of pastoral ministry at the Fuller Theological Seminary in California. To hit those issues head on uh, in a church context, I think is really helpful. Church members we talk to say they like the idea of bringing an issue like sex out in the open in church. I think in today's society, it's not talked about enough. That we'd be looking forward to, you know, hearing some, you know, some things and how to open up our communication and improve our our sex life. So. But not everyone is thrilled because of complaints. Keller says the billboard company refused to allow the sex slogan for a second month. So now it's just the church's name. My issue was that uh, the, the billboard had this sense of luridness and deception. Uh, that was trying to draw people someplace, and when it got drawn to a church, uh, I think people would feel cheated or duped. We've heard a couple of people who have used the phrase bait and switch. I don't think we're doing that. It's not about us trying to grow our church. It's not about us trying to build this big thing. It's about us building people. We're in the people building business. Randy Newton says the billboard campaign caught his attention and now he says he's hooked. It's really in your face and um, it's a for real topic. You know, everybody, everybody deals with it and for it to actually happen in the church and for the pastor to actually step up and say, hey, this is what we're going to say about it as a church, um, is a really bold statement. God has given us the ability to have a great sex life in our marriages. Everyone agrees that sex sells, but Matt Keller thinks he can use it to fill people's hearts while also filling his seats. Ted Rollins, CNN, Fort Myers, Florida. Let's go to tonight's Out in the Open panel now. Radio talk show host and Newsmax.com columnist Steve Malsberg, Adina Lekovic of the Muslim Public Affairs Council, and Michelle Bernard, president of the Independent Women's Forum. Great to have all of you with us. No doubt when you look at these numbers on the screen right now, church attendance at that church up 38%. Sex sells. Would you be comfortable with that message? In your synagogue, in your mosque? No. I mean, I would never join or go to a, a, a service because I see a bulletin board that gives me a sex website that's affiliated with the synagogue or the congregation. It's a gimmick. It's gimmickry. I don't know enough about what else he talks about or how much else he brings up. But to have, you know, the, the premise to be there is that, well, God wants you to have sex. God wants you to have a great sex life. I mean, come on. That's not why people go to church or that's not why people go to synagogue or a mosque. They go to, for spiritual reasons and they know that they could have a good sex life with their, with their mate. But, you know, it's even more than that because if you take a look, I, I personally feel it's a little vulgar, but I understand it as a marketing trick. I think his church is located in a school or in a movie theater, and he's trying to get people in. But it goes beyond that. When you first read the headline, I would think that a lot of people would think to themselves, mycrappysexlife.com, oh, I'm going to learn about performance. 
But if you dig through the pages, what he's really doing is, uh, is preaching to the choir and telling people sex before marriage is not a good thing. And if you wait until you get married, this is wonderful. It's gimmickry. It's gimmickry it's you say it is bait and switch then. I do. I do. Yeah, it, I mean, it is to some degree. And, and if we look at this in the best possible light, it's that we're really trying to preserve the institution of marriage. And we certainly can't be against that. So looking at, you know, what, what we should be simultaneously talking about is how to decrease divorce rates, how to increase communication in marriages, how to deal with everything else in addition to sex that will improve the quality of marital life for all people so that it, you know, it's, it's not as simple as just improve your sex life and the divorce rates are going to go down and all the problems are going to be fixed. Let's look at what else you can find on this preacher's website uh, where he says sex wasn't invented in a dark alley behind a porn shop. We believe that it's part of God's design. In fact, this may shock you, but God wants you to have Great. Sex. Some, Are you offended by that? I'm not offended, but there's something very unseemly about this this preacher who doesn't have a church, doesn't have a building, you know, holds these town hall type meetings what based on a billboard. What difference does it make? What but, the but, what the it, building? But but unseemly that you have to advertise that you're going to be talking about sex and how to improve your sex life and what great. I think premarital sex should be uh, abstinence should be taught. But you don't draw people in by saying, you know, mysexlifesinks.com. There's just something very unseemly about that. It doesn't go along with religion. And you know, also, it's all, everything is up for interpretation, and this is what is always wrong. Or I don't want to say wrong with religion, but here's the danger, and here's the slippery slope. This is his interpretation of the Bible. I mean, there are other people, for example, who would say, if you look at the Song of Solomon, it is absolutely the most sexual book um, in, the, uh, in the Bible, and it doesn't talk about man and woman being husband and wife. It just talks about a woman, she's single and sex is not for procreation. So what is he going to do when some of the people in his ministry read the Song of Solomon and say to him, but premarital sex, it says it right here in the Bible. It's okay. Well, if, if, if you need this kind of thing to be drawn into a church or a synagogue, you're not going to stay and come back and become all religious all of a sudden. You're going to stay for the sex chatter, yeah. and then you're going to leave and never come back. That's all. It's it's like, it, seems, final word. it seems like a passing trend more than anything else. It's a way of getting people in the pews, and certainly these days people are looking for any way to get people in the pews. So we'll, we'll just see how long it really lasts. I was going to say, we'll know mm -hmm. if it's a passing trend when we yeah. look at those numbers a year from now. <laughs> stay right there. We're going to come back to you all in just a moment. And please us know, uh, let us know what you think. Is it okay to use sex in sermons? To sell religion and pack the pews. Go to our website, cnn.com slash Paula, cast your vote. We'll have the results a little bit later on. And welcome back. We wanted to give you an unusual perspective tonight. Eventually, on the screen, you're going to see uh, what will be the view from inside a full Muslim veil. We asked one of our cameramen to walk around with a burqa draped over the camera to give you an idea of what it's like to see the world from inside one. And here's why we did this. This week, the British government gave principals the power to ban girls from wearing full face veils at school. They're concerned about safety. And they say teachers and students need to see each other to communicate. Well, we're bringing this story out in the open tonight because of the tough questions it raises about religious freedom, education, safety, and